Last month I did this crazy project where I did a new experimental video every day for the month of October, um, all around this theme of horror. So what I did is alongside my friend Tim Moore, um, we created, I think, something like, well, I don't even remember what the exact number was, something like 3,600 video clips of people screaming from various famous films, um, famous horror films, uh, or other fear sort of scenes. Um, and then for the month of October, every day I took sort of like a sampling of those uh, pieces and did something different with it, sometimes using AI tools, sometimes using some sort of big data, you know, processing tools, using FMPEG, other things. So uh, it turns out it's really hard to give context and explain what you're doing in every video when you're also trying to ship a video every day. So now that we're about a month out since I launched or since I finished the project, um, I thought we'd just go back and I'd talk about each, each film individually. So I'll show a short little clip and then I'll also talk about how I went about doing it and sort of the concept behind it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Day one, Stochastic Terror, Seed 666. So to kick us off, uh, I just wanted to sort of take a random sampling of those clips that we generated and sort of turn them into a little sequence. Um, so it's seed 666. For those of you who are familiar with random seeding, uh, it just uses that seed. I'd played with the other ideas, but decided just like to leave it conceptual. And I think it's also 666, cli 666 clips, or maybe it's 66.6 .6 seconds. I've already forgotten most of the ideas I, I did for these things, especially really early in that month. Um, so if you're familiar with this concept of, uh, there's this bot on Twitter called, uh, what is it, Endless Scream, which is just like this bot that just screams every couple hours. Um, a lot of that was sort of conceptually the idea here. It's just like endless screaming and a lot of the, you know, slasher or monster or whatever is sort of hidden away. So in this concept, you're sort of seeing people scream and you don't know why. Um, so it's sort of the day, the first day one to kick it off. Day two, the endless. Uh, I'd always known that I wanted to have like one clip that extended really, 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 really long. So in this case, I'm using a, a, a frame interpolation library. So it is machine learning um, and taking a short clip from um, the film X and extending it into like a 10 minute long sequence. So you see this like very, very like slow, suspenseful, drawn out scene until uh, the character finally screams. Day three, my favorite murder rock. Uh, so for this one, I was just really kind of riffing on the idea of fan edits and fan cams and want to sort of take some a film or something and like sort of sequence it together. So uh, this is a film called Murder Rock, which is by uh, Fulci. Uh, it's kind of one that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, but I actually like in watching it for this, I really, really enjoyed it. And it turned out uh, when Tim and I were editing the sequences together, we just put all the clips in order back together. And it felt like this really cool sort of small film in and of itself. Day four, Deathbed. Um, for those of you that have never seen the movie Deathbed, you have to check that out. Uh, you know, as we're going through these clips, I'm trying to think about how I coordinate ideas and how I pull sort of commonalities across all these films together into their, their own little sequences. So Deathbed was sort of, you know, there's a common trope of people having nightmares and waking up from their dreams. And I sort of just took all the clips I could find that included people in bed and just sort of resequence them. So it's kind of this like, I don't know, meta idea of you know, being asleep and then waking up from a nightmare. Day five, rapid eye movement. So you'll see that a lot of these early clips are really focused on sort of sequencing. Like I see this a lot as like machine learning, right? So machines take data and they try to, you know, calculate it in, you know, proximity to each other. Um, and in this case, I'm sort of the machine learning model. So of course there's lots of those eye close-ups, especially because I did a lot of Giallo films and Giallo directors love eyes. I have no idea why. Um, so this was a sequence that was all about eyes. So it's just like a couple minutes of just eyes and various, uh, like movements and that sort of thing. Day six, see no evil. Again, I'm kind of like stretching all the ideas I possibly could here. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting was the idea of just not showing any of the video clips, you know, so in some cases I've got video clips, but no sound. Uh, and this is sort of the invert of that, right? So it's no video with just sound. Um, and I believe we actually end up taking out all of the audio tracks, which so just the screams. Um, and in some cases, some of the audio slips through because we're using a machine learning model that isn't perfect. Um, but in a lot of cases, just screaming. And I kind of love this idea. You know, I was sharing this one with Tim. He's like, this one's actually scary because you don't know when the next scream comes because there's no sight here. So I thought it was really interesting to, to try that out. Day seven, scream scenes. 
uh, so I guess this is the eponymous title. I don't know. It just they sort of came at different moments. Um, but this was just taking every Scream movie and just showing you the Scream scenes from it. Um, when I started this project, I had this idea that I would do this for like every major film franchise. Uh, and it turns out it takes a really long time to do all these video clips. Um, so I think I started the project maybe three or four months before actually launching in October. Um, and I think we really only got through Scream. And honestly, like, I watched a bunch of Halloween movies. And by the time I got to like five or six, I was like, I can't do any more of these. So Scream was the only one that made it through. Um, but I'm actually really excited about like how this one ended up because I think it's interesting. And again, because there was a Scream movie that just came out last year, like there's a really interesting concept of just seeing like these Scream movies throughout the years. Day eight, suspense. So one of the other ideas, you know, a lot of this project is really just like what's what's hiding in the data that can be explored or be sort of pulled out and like shown in its own right. You know, this is again almost like structuralist filmmaking, where it's like, what what are the clips I have, and how do I and how do I consider them in sequence? Um, and suspense was really this idea that, you know, a lot of these clips are very very short, but a couple of them are pretty long. And I got this idea of like, what if I just took all the clips and sequence them by length, um, so that you start out really slow with maybe these long drawn out sort of shots, and then by the end you have these very very short fast staccato like clips. Um, I don't think I end up using all of the se- all of the clips from every film. It sort of ended up being a, like a random sampling of things with some structure to it. Uh, but I'm actually pretty happy with how this one turned out. Day nine. These are a few of my favorite fears. For those of you that have looked at my other work recently, I've been doing a lot of these sort of what I call reprints, which is basically printing frames onto paper, then scanning that paper back in and turning them back into frames. Um, and I think this was one of the times I really wanted to do that here. And the idea is just like I'm taking a couple of clips where I think there's some something interesting and using sort of whatever paper I'm printing onto because I'm printing on a lot of old books or, you know, sample books or that sort of thing. And sort of just trying to like tie together a narrative of how these things sequence together. So in some cases, it's men, you know, staring off in the distance and the paper underneath it is all women. So it's, you know, about maybe, I don't know, masculinity or misogyny or whatever. Um, so that was an interesting way to sort of combine some of these ideas. And for me, it also started to get to the point of where we're saying something like, what are these people sca- like screaming at? Or like, what are they afraid of? Day 10, pitch black. So days 10 through 12 are really sort of me starting to sort of tag the data essentially in these models. Um, and there's a really, really great documentary um, as well as a book that came out recently called Black Noir that's all about uh, black actors in horror films um, and how they've sort of been, you know, hidden or put on the sidelines because, you know, there's the idea that the black character has to die first or whatever. Um, so I wanted to sort of pull all of the, like, characters of color that were in these data sets and show them uh, in a sequence. Um, so I think it's randomized. Um, one of the interesting things people know about this is I think 75% of the clips that are used in this sequence uh, come from, I think, two or three films. Um, and the rest are like very small like spatterings of, of black characters in these films. Um, so some of this is also like, you know, a little bit of digital anthropology, like me trying to explore the data set and trying to see, you know, what made sense. And I think you can see, I think, you know, Pitch Black is probably, I think, the shortest of these three films. Day 11, Scream Queens. So obviously the Scream Queen final girl is a big concept within um, horror films, but I was sort of interested to see, like, what's the length of... You know, as I'm watching all these clips, I'm like, man, there's so many screaming women in here. How how does that compare to the men? So I did a sequence where I, I pulled out all the images that are just single women or women isolated in, a, in the film frame that are screaming, and then I compared that to, to day 12, which is all the men. And I think it's something like three to one. So the length of the clips in Scream Queens is like an hour and a half. I think Scream Kings is maybe 45 minutes or 30 minutes. So just really fascinating to sort of see that happen. Day 12, Scream Kings. So again, just had to show the men on that side too. Uh, and I'm also interested just not just in like du- durational, like how long is how, how long is the women's clips versus how long are the men's clips, but also just looking at the way in which men are portrayed in these films. They're often like not screaming they don't look like they're about to break out in tears. They're more just like, oh, you know, all these sequences are like them being like, huh. It's There's less of that like pure terror, which I think is kind of fascinating to see these two back to back. 
Day 13, Twitch of the Death Nerve. Uh, so you might also have noticed that all these titles are in some ways related to other films, sometimes actually like referencing film titles. Um, Twitch of the Death Nerve is Mario Baba's Bay of Blood. I think the original ter- the original title for it was De- Twitch of the Death Nerve. Which I just kind of love. It's a it's an amazing title. All the Italian films have such amazing titles. Um, but for this one, I was really thinking about step printing. So again, some of this is coming from old experimental films like of the 60s and 70s. And this one, I was really thinking about the sequence of, you know, sort of moving between these various scenes. I, I sort of like realized that some of these scenes were actually cut up, but they were one shot completely. So, you know, someone, you know, in these, some of these films where they were, sh- it was a full shot, uh, maybe 10 seconds duration. And then the director and editor cut them all into like three or four sequences. So I tried to bring them back together, but then there was like maybe little sections missing or whatever. And then I was sort of playing with this FFmpeg tool, which automatically resequences or reorders some of the frames. Um, and it creates this sort of essentially twitch, uh, like a very twitchy look. Um, so I just thought it was like a very fun little sequence and I thought the title was perfect for it. Day 14, up close and personal. This is actually the first, uh, video that uses open pose, which is a library I love using. Um, it basically gives you face positions and body positions. And I had this idea, you know, looking at a lot of the scenes that I saw in this data set was, you know, you have that sort of different depth or the different sort of closeness, um, of the film crop or the you know how close the the camera is to the to the the actor um and i have this idea of just sort of again you'll see a lot of these are like linear sequences sort of like linear interpolation but using films instead of like i don't know a machine learning model or something um so in this case i took you know, i tried to track basically the all the frames and determine how close the actor was within the film frame um and i got i think open pose covered about 80 to 80 percent of the of the of the films or the clips we need to use and i had to go in manually do the last couple because it turns out open pose doesn't really work very well on just eyeballs or like just parts of faces Um, but i really love how this one turned out day 15 the descent so some of this is going back to like the old well that i always use Um, this happens to be one of them so this is using next stream prediction Uh, there were a couple of scenes of people sort of falling backwards or zooming in and I just really wanted to play with that idea so I ran these through an extreme prediction model and you see the people sort of start to fall and they sort of like dissolve into noise and other things which I really like day 16 dot avi uh this one was just like an idea I've been had in my head for a while which would just be to you know play with more of this video glitch tools um and really sort of explore what happens when you when you put you know, a scream scene into these things. Um, and it actually took me a lot of time to really play with this and dial in the right settings. Um, and I would say some are more successful than others in this clip, really. Uh, but I kind of love, like, some of them just do some really, really amazing things. Um, so I kind of appreciate how this one turned out. Day 17, soundtrackless. Um, so this is one, if I was going to get a DMCA, like, you know, um, notice to remove any of my films, this would be the one I would get. Um, I'm not going to show any sequences from it because I don't want to give away the the sort of idea here. Um, but it's a very famous horror film where I've actually removed the soundtrack, um, and you only hear the you only see the film without sound, or I guess with sound with the, the voice actors and that sort of thing, but without the soundtrack. Which, if you're familiar with horror films, you know that like the soundtrack helps you understand you're supposed to be scared. So in this film in particular, which I think has such a like quintessential scary soundtrack, removing it actually kind of makes it feel less scary which i think is kind of interesting because the other idea that i had with a lot of these sequences was like how do i make something feel scary without it being a narrative and in this case it's almost like how do i make a narrative film less scary by pulling out the soundtrack day 18 vertigo again this is sort of like a really honing in on some giallo tricks of the trade uh giallo films love to have that like quick zoom in sequence before or after someone screams um, and there were just a bunch of these in, in the film data set. So I was just sort of like, let's just bring them back to back and have this sort of like very trippy sort of zooming in and out, in and out, in and out sort of sequence. Day 19, the scream, even though I'm trying to, to define this project as like a post AI project, I definitely have a lot of, uh, machine learning tools in here. Um, and I came across this idea or just like had this concept of taking Edvard Munch's the scream and taking a bunch of my video clips and sort of applying that style to these video clips. So this uses stable diffusion and using some of the image to image tools within that. Um, and I kind of love how it looks like 
I would assume maybe I, I'm hoping people can kind of recognize the reference to Edvard Munch's The Scream, um, even though I don't think all of them look like The Scream. Uh, but I just kind of love the concept of taking, you know, essentially a horror painting and bringing that to the horror film genre. Day 20, Twister. Uh, so there's a bunch of these sort of match cut ideas within these film sequences. Um, and Twister was this one where, again, everyone's sort of turning around, doing that quick turn, like, what's going, what's happening behind me? And I just got this idea of, like, I really want to see what happens when you sequence all these things in an order. So this almost feels like a dance film to me, right? Like, people are constantly, like, you know, the match cuts make you feel like you're constantly spinning round and round and round. Um, and I just really love that idea. And I think this one... This one was actually generated by hand. Um, some of the other ones that do match cutting are done through open pose, but this one I really had to do by hand in order to get the right sequencing and the right timing for everything. Um, and I really love how it turned out. Day 21, Crescendo. So just like uh, Day 8 Suspense, um, Day 8 Suspense was about you know the, the, the clips getting faster over time. Um, this one is about sound. So uh, while I'm not the best at audio and audio ML and that sort of thing, I do really appreciate how audio has a, a strong sense in the horror world. So in this case, I wanted to sort of go from really quiet to really loud by the end. So it just takes, you know, a bunch of clips and sort of sequences them by, uh, you know, volume within the within the sound. And uh, it gets louder and louder as you go through it. So if you're watching this one and you keep turning up the volume, make sure you turn it down as well. Day 22, Slasher. I love the idea of like having this title be slasher and you feel like it's supposed to be raw and very like, you know, like a, a knife cutting through, you know, something with a lot of friction. And then the actual video is, you know, using video art to get lots of little crops and stuff in that are very square and very perpendicular. Um, so this uses a bunch of FFmpeg tools. If you've seen any of my, uh, I taught an FFmpeg class, I guess maybe two years ago now. Um, and it was really about sort of automating these tools. So this is a bunch of automated stuff where I could feed in a clip give it a bunch of different um, parameters, and then out would, would be spit this really interesting sort of slashed up or cut up sort of video. Day 23, a cycle of violence. I also knew that color was a really important thing for me, and I was trying to figure out how to get to that within these films. Um, and what I ended up doing is sort of manually going through and pulling out a bunch of the, the clips that were very, like, almost m monotone in the, in the way the color was used in them and then trying to sort of so show that as sort of a color cycle. Uh, I have to say, I think this one is maybe one of my least successful in terms of actually like how it turned out, but there's something conceptually there that I think is interesting. And one of the funny things I think about doing this project is I, you know, as I was doing this, I was like, man, if I had double the amount of video, I bet I could get to a better sequence for this. Or if there were more clips with these sort of color ranges, I bet I could do more of this. So I don't know, maybe we'll do it again next year. It was a lot of work, but I think it might be kind of interesting to try similar ideas again next year. Day 24, Fright Night. So as I was prepping for this project, you know, I was pulling in all these videos. I was getting Tim to do all the editing for me. Um, and this is where I, you know, I'd seen Mario Bava's Black Sabbath before. But in using this, I really saw, like, the influence of especially A Drop of Water, which is one of the sequences from Black Sabbath, on so much of the Italian giallo uh, film filmmaking. And it just so happened I was in eBay one night and I was just like, oh, I wonder if anything from Black Sabbath is like available as like a print. And sure enough, a drop of water was literally available to buy. Uh, so I immediately hit purchase and I got this film and it was very red. You know, it was faded. I was like, what do I do with this thing? Um, and I was starting to take a class at Mano no Aware here in, in Brooklyn um, about sort of direct animation. And I'd been reading a bunch of other stuff about how to reticulate and destroy film. And I was like, this feels like a moment from, that I have to do this. So I boiled a bunch of the film, reticulated it, did some other stuff with it. Um, and when it finished, it was like a mess. Like it was really, really like the film had shrunk. A bunch of other stuff had happened. So I took it over to Mono and I was like, can we scan this? Like what's going on here? And of course, Steve was like, yeah, we can scan it. No problem. Steve's the director. And then Lucas, the one who's actually in charge of scanning, it was like, that was a nightmare to scan. It was so hard. The film kept breaking all these other things. Um, but when I got it back, I was just like, this is beautiful. Like, there's so, there's so many beautiful images in here. It's So some of it's bleached. Some of it is reticulated by boiling it in, like, soap water. Um, and when I was finished, I was just like, this feels like a real film, like a real short experimental film. Um, and I was talking to my friend Abel, who uh, goes by the name of Commuter as, his, as a musician. And I sort of said, Abel, like, could you 
like provide a soundtrack to this. I sent him sort of the drop of water, like audio. And I was like, I feel like I've seen this, you know, when I played, when I played the film back, I listened to it on, on backwards and I thought it was really cool. And he just brought like a really cool sort of soundscape to this piece. So I have to say like of all the pieces, this one is my favorite. Um, it's also the, the least to do with the data set, but it's sort of like taking what we were doing digitally between Tim and I, and then taking that concept and working with it with 16 mil film, which is such a different process because you have to go through and manually clip out each thing, manually tape it back together, do all these processes. So I think I started like, this is probably something I started on day one and it took me three weeks to get to finished product, including getting it scanned. So, um, but I really love this piece. Day 25, Into the Dark. So again, these sort of linear sequences where you're processing the video to try to understand what's going on in it, and then you can create like a linear interpolation. So this one takes clips, sort of determines what the um, brightness level is of the clip, and then over time it gets darker and darker and darker. So um, again, it's just like, to me this is what's really interesting about sort of thinking about these film pieces conceptually rather than trying to make a narrative it's more like you know the narrative is the film gets darker throughout time um and that creates a different way of approaching the 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 corpus of the material day 26 the brood better call Saul so obviously psycho is like the biggest influence on so many of these films that I saw that I that I worked with um and I've also seen I think Martin Arnold did like a piece that was sort of like uh, Psycho, and he chopped it up in the Martin Arnold sort of traditional way. Um, but as I was watching these things again, I was thinking about how match cuts could be influenced on, you know, that shit, that that infamous shower scene, the 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 Saul Bass, um, Alfred Hitchcock shower scene, and how that is really, you know, in many ways, that is the the granddaddy of most horror slasher films after that. So I went in and I sort of like matched up individual cuts that that I thought could sort of work with this. Day 27, Masks of Death. So this is another one, one of those open pose sequences. But what I loved about this idea was like open pose can give you the video, the, the sort of facial features, the face markers. But that then gives me a way to sort of then redraw those. So I, what I would do is sort of almost in like the way I use reprint, I would print out the faces onto paper and then I would trace them using a pen or some other tool. And I would bring them back in and I would collage them all together. And uh, honestly... I was doing really well up until like day 26 or day 27 in hitting my mark every day and masks of death ended up taking me like three or four times longer than I expected. Um, and I think I actually released this one on like day 29. Um, but I kind of love how it looks. So there's this beautiful, like sort of hand animation sequence, which again is such a experimental film thing to do that to bring sort of the new technology in with that idea of direct animation and working them together like just felt really special day 28 i see your fear all right if i had to go back i would change the title of this one it would be like i see your scream or something where it's like making it clear that i'm visualizing audio um thing you know i like to do with a lot of my work is audio visual or audio reactive um, and i was trying to think about like how i could make these film clips audio reactive uh so we're using ffmpeg here to do all sorts of things to chop up the scene based on um, audio, uh, as the level gets higher, as the scream gets louder, like v various things get affected. So color, um, choppiness, exposure, like those sort of things. Day 29, Human Centipede. Um, I love the title for this one because I think when I share it with people, they're like, uh, are you really going to show me Human Centipede? Because I don't want to watch that. And instead, it's like this very funny match cut scene. Um, so the idea being that as every film clip uh, ends, we find the clip in the data set that matches it the most match cut wise, or like, you know, just body position wise, essentially. And then we do that for, I don't know, 20 or 25 sequences. Um, this one ended up being a huge nightmare to sort of produce or like write code for, um, but it ended up being really fun. Uh, as you see, like, I probably like, as the days got longer, I kept pushing off. I had a whole list of these projects. Um, and I kept pushing off the harder ones until the very end. And Human Centipede was one of those I was really dreading trying to write the code for. And it did, it was a little annoying, but like I love the result of it because it actually looks really good. Like you can actually see the cut sequences kind of match up pretty well. Day 30, House of Wax. So I had to do a style gam model. Uh, I think that's like the machine learning work I'm most known for. 
Um, but it turns out it takes a long ass time to train these these StyleGAN models. So this is a StyleGAN XL model, which takes even longer to train. Um, so what I've been doing for you know leading up to October, I'd been making this data set, and I'd pulled out a bunch of image frames, um, basically using open pose to figure out where the the face position is. So I cropped out all the faces into five twelve squares, uh, fed that into StyleGAN, and because unlike say like other face models that are really well aligned. This one I took sort of the raw crop, um, meaning sometimes the faces were turned or sometimes, you know, the faces were a little bit like cropped in and it leads to this like very murky, muddy, uh, like kind of idea as you do the interpolation. So I call it house of wax. If you like, if people really do like what look like wax figures. Um, and then I did some editing to sort of make it feel like less like just a purely interpolation video, but more of a film. Day 31 body parts. Okay. We finally made it to the end. Uh, and body parts was, you know, I finished that film day one actually. Um, and so this is just every single image clip used, um, in the sequence. Now it's not every one of them cause we didn't include the eyeball ones. Um, cause the eyeball ones were especially set aside. Um, but it does include pretty much every single, uh, other scream scene, um, clip and it ends up being about two hours of film. So, you know, throughout the 31 days we were doing all these clips to sort of, you know, uh, work with this data and it's kind of funny because I feel like I end up with some of my favorite clips that I kind of went back to a lot of times. Um, I probably could have done a better job of really going through through the, each of these and sort of, you know, trying to be a little bit more equitable with, with each of their usage. But um, I think it's really fun to see all the all the pieces combined because then you can go back and sort of watch and figure out where they show up and that sort of thing. Not that I expect people to sit around and watch two hours of just random film clips uh, randomly sequenced together. Um, but if you've got the time and you want to go for it, I also kind of love, I love when like, um, music producers, like rap music producers that do a lot of sampling, like Pete Rock would always do this. They would just like let the beat ride out at the end. So after they'd done all the chopped work, they would then like show you what the original sound was. It was kind of like showing off, like, see how I, see how I chopped this up. Kind of felt like I was doing that with this piece where it's like, okay, now that you've seen all the cool, crazy effects I've been doing, here's all the original pieces. Um, and I don't know, maybe someone will be inspired and like go through and like do their own uh, Scream Scenes project with all those body parts pieces. So that's it. 31 days of uh, experimental videos. Um, I hope maybe this like gave you a little insight into how each one of them works, maybe inspires you to do your own work. Uh, maybe also tells you like, okay, maybe I don't need to watch the hour and a half long Scream Queens, but I can spend two minutes looking at Into the Dark or something. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed working on this. Uh, I will probably not ever do this again because it was a ton of work. Um, and again, I want to give a big shout out to Tim who did so much editing work for me. Um, you know, we spent months sort of trimming all these clips into like the exact right sequence, um, which was just a really fun process. Uh, but also I'm really glad that I can watch horror movies now without having to be like, Oh, was that a scream scene to clip out or, you know, Oh, was it this sequence or was it this sequence? Like, you know, how closely do I crop this in? So glad I don't have to do that anymore, uh, even though my brain is now wired to do that. So sometimes we'll pause films and be like, take a screenshot of that. And it's like, oh, no, I don't I'm not working on that project anymore. Um, but anyway, I really worked. I really enjoyed working on this. Um, I hope maybe you get some fun out of this or maybe it really enjoyed one of these sequences or just get ideas from it. Um, so with that, I'm signing off. Uh, thanks again. And I appreciate all your support.